I'm Callum Kerr. I'm here with the pick of the pride outside New Zealand Rugby House. It's here to meet New Zealand Rugby Union. Come on, let's go meet them. In the summer of 2017, I was selected as a Scottish ambassador for the British and Irish Lions Tour to New Zealand. I travelled the rugby capital of the world, studying and learning what makes the British and Irish Lions so unique. The last remaining touring team left in sport, I was fascinated how the once amateur side still managed to operate in a hectic professional era. But not everyone still believes in the magic of the Lions. So upon returning home, I decided to meet some of the most influential people in the sport to find out whether Lions are still roaring or slowly starting to pump up. I'm Callum Kerr and this is my Lions Journey. Guys, just maybe start by telling me a little bit about what you've been doing and why, because it's a really, really interesting and I'm sure a very fulfilling story. Yeah, so a few months ago, Sam Warburton called upon young people aged between 18 and 21 from all of the home nations to apply to go out to New Zealand and visit local rugby clubs, uh, go to the games and soak in the New Zealand culture to try and see what we can learn and bring back from the home nations. The home leg of my journey starts in Edinburgh where I've arranged to meet up with Scotland and Lions legend Andy Irvin. Andy was a three-time tourist and Lions tour manager in 2013. What's your first, your earliest memory of the British and Irish Lions? Well, I think um, it would be at school um, watching the, um, I think it was the 68 Lions, but uh, it, it, we got very little of it. it. It was in black and white. And then just after I left school, first year in senior rugby, um, watched them play in New Zealand. Again, it was in black and white. Um, but, you know, to, to have success in New Zealand, because we, we obviously won that tour, and first time we'd ever won in New Zealand. And, um, you know, great players like Gareth Edwards and JPR Williams, David Duckham, Barry John. Um, it was just tremendous to watch. Yeah, and when you were watching 68 and 71, was the Lions ever a goal? For you, or was it always a goal? Well, in '68 it wouldn't be because uh, you know I was still quite a young kid and playing school rugby. In '71, uh, I was playing senior rugby by then, and uh, had had been mixing with some of these players. You know, I played against some of them: Gordon Brown, Sandy Michael Ian McLaughlin. So it, it it was sort of on the radar screen then, but at that point I still hadn't been capped. Yeah, and then obviously fast forward three years from that, and you're. You're on the tour in South Africa. What was that like when you you got the nod? Well, it was obviously a, a fantastic experience. I mean, I was the uh, I think I was the second youngest on, on the tour. Clive Reese was I think a month younger than me, so we were really two just young kids, um, and uh, it was in some at the beginning it was a little bit uh, overwhelming because you, you know I mean Willie John McBride had been playing for the Lions when I was in primary school. And here's, here's a guy that was captaining the team that I was playing in. So it, it, there was a huge learning curve, but um, a fantastic experience. And I mean, I, <clears throat> I would say I, I learned a huge amount on that trip because you go out quite green and naive um, and you're playing with all your heroes and your idols. And then two months, three months later, you're coming back and, and you're part of that process. You, you know, you don't feel intimidated anymore you're comfortable in their company. Um, I mean, that, that's the one thing about these Lions tours. They were quite long, so you really got to, to know each other. Um, you know, there were 21, 22 games, um, and it was just a fantastic experience. In looking at your Scotland career, you really did have a, a illustrious playing career here at home at Murrayfield. 51 caps, many points, and you captained the side on numerous occasions. So. Looking at your, your three lines tours, where do they stack up really in your, your greatest achievements? Well, I think everyone, you know, every youngster, the, their ambition is, is to play for their country, um, you know, because we all have very nationalistic tendencies. And um, certainly my first cap for Scotland um, would be there or thereabouts as a highlight of e even just, you know, just being awarded your first cap is a massive thing. From a playing point of view, if there is one step above your national team, obviously it's the Lions because it's the best of the best and it's, a, it's, it's an even greater challenge. 
Um, and it's quite special because you're playing with players who you normally play against. You, you know, we were brought up to regard the English as the enemy, the, the Irish and, and, the, and the Welsh. You, you know, they were our opponents, they, they weren't our teammates. But when you come together on the Lions tour, all that's thrown out the window. And all of a sudden, you realise that these English guys, they're really good set of lads, you know, all the things that you've been taught when you were a youngster about, you know, the old enemy and so forth. I mean, some of my best pals um, in, in rugby to this day, I mean, just last week, I met up with Bill Bowman, who, you know, kicked lumps out of me for three or four seasons. And then you play in the same Lions team together and you're the best of pals. And... Um, I mean, we had a get together last week, Jim Rennick, Bill Bowen, myself, um, and we're reminiscing about that 1980 tour. Um, so the Lions is that bit special in the sense that, you know, you you don't just have a camaraderie with your own players, it's it's players from other countries as well. Um, and it's it's a fantastic experience. Yeah, and then moving further through the years, we get to 1995, where of course, the landscape of the sport really changed with the introduction of professionalism. Do you think that kind of had a big effect in the way the Lions was kind of looked at? Well, I would say the, the, the game changed dramatically after it went professional. Um, you know, the, there are very, very few aspects of the old amateur era left, and, and, and the Lions is actually one of them, because um, although the players are paid, um, the ethos and the spirit of a Lions tour continues, and I have to say, I think it's quite remarkable that it has. I mean, obviously, the, the tours are under pressure from a timing point of view because there aren't nearly the, the, num the same number of Saturdays available to, to play the tour matches because the season is a lot longer uh, back home in, in the UK and Ireland, and then it also starts much earlier. I mean, we used to finish end of March, um, play a bit of sevens, and then the, there was no rugby at all in, in May or June. They're now playing professional rugby until the end of May, um, and we didn't start until the 1st of September. They're now starting on the 1st of August. So the, the off-season is so much shorter, and, and that obviously has a big impact on Lions tours. We'd love to see much longer Lions tours, but in fact, they're actually being compacted more and more. Um, but the great thing is, from the players' point of view, they still regard it as, as the ultimate, you, you know. Um, all the players in, in the Six Nations, certainly the UK-based ones and the Irish ones, they want to play for the Lions. That, that, that is their ultimate. And um, I, I think it's quite remarkable that that, that aspect has, has remained. The Lions ambassadors, they think that they're 10, uh, well, youngsters, they're, they're, they're 10 people who are just at the end of school or early in their careers in university. And their job is to go around uh, representing the Lions and the, the Lions tracksuits on, and it's to discuss the fall off in rugby between 16 and 24, which is the big fall off area, drop off area where we lose numbers. And my goodness, they were absolutely magnificently impressive. They're run by uh, Steve Keith Granger at, uh, at the RFU, and um, uh, they've been all over the country, they've been talking to various sporting bodies, to New Zealand Rugby, and they're going to report back to the Lions board on Sunday. That was, that was very, very um, uplifting to see that. My journey now takes me to Glasgow in the hunt to find out how the media perceive the tour. And for that, I've arranged to chat with former two-time Lion and now BBC presenter, John Beattie. Thank you for, for meeting me first. And Pleasure. Uh, just looking at your playing career, your Lion in 1980 and 1983, hmm. those experiences, how do they weigh up really with your, your other achievements playing 25 times for Scotland? Is that at the top of the list? The, the most bizarre thing is I think I was an unsuccessful Lion, so I don't look back on my Lions tours with a huge amount of pleasure. Uh, even when we played international rugby at the time, I know the Lions have become this incredible thing that there's something about, you know, being a Lion is the pinnacle of life and you'd be better off, you know, Neil Armstrong landing on the moon was irrelevant compared to being with a Lion. But as a young player, it was more important for me to play for my country. It was more important to pull on a blue jersey than be a Lion, partly because my Lions tours were disasters. They were badly coached, badly organised, shambles. 
uh, populated by kind of older players who weren't very good. And my, my memory of, you know, you would be interviewing me as a young guy thinking, as I thought when I joined the Lions, it would be living like a monk, training as hard as anybody had ever trained. And I turned up for my first Lions tour in London and the call was for everyone to just get drunk. And I remember thinking, this is crazy. And it went on from there. So the, the, the image of the Lions was of an incredibly professional, slick outfit. The reality of it at the time was a, a thing that bumbled along, that went from place to place. You know, everyone got drunk on a Saturday, not very well coached, the ones I was on, and a real disappointment to me. That was the reality of being a Lion. It was disappointing. We didn't win, it was disappointing. Yeah, and of course, 1995 was when the, the game really completely changed. That was when it turned professional. Do you think that was when the image of Lions kind of had to change? I think one of the terrible things about rugby is it's, it's all about protecting its image. Rugby is a sore game. You know, you play. It's a sore game. And it's full of good people, but it's become this commercial thing that's being protected. And it's something wonderful. So you've got... A competition for people all around the world is to play your sport. So you've got to have this USP, this special image. And the Lions have become this special image. Professionalism's brought glamour, much more, uh, much more intense scrutiny, but with it, a much more professional media outfit. When we toured, there was maybe a couple of journalists and one photographer. And now there's the examination in micro detail of everything they do on camera, interviewing people, you know, cameras behind the scenes. So I think the Lions deliberately tried to create an image based on almost folklore. Because I can remember the great watching the images of the 70s on television. So the Lions tried to create a reality around that. I created a brand. You know, and, and you can all, we can all picture the jersey, can't we? The, we? I don't want to name the sponsor, but you can name the 90, 1997 sponsors there, isn't it? The Lions became huge, they made the documentary. So I think there was a real concerted effort to make it sexy, new, modern. In some ways, ditch the old, because that's all long-haired louts somehow winning and make it professional, uh, you know, very, very almost business-like, you know, team-building stuff wasn't it? Team building stuff before the 97 tour. All, all that kind of nonsense was actually rugby is about training hard, playing hard, winning. But you create a world that doesn't really exist, but you create a world of myth, of legend. You populate the management with great lions, don't you? You get Fran Cotton in, and then the latest one you were on, you get John Spencer and you get Andy Irvin in. Now, are they the best rugby managers? I don't know. They're there because they're lions. McGeechan talks about being a lion. It becomes part of this American rubbish where you, it's, it's almost like, um, it's almost like media training poppycock creating an image that sells a product. It's a product being sold. They're trying to attract the media rights to ultimately Sky TV or probably the BBC bids, I'm sure, Five Live, whoever it is, talk sport bidding. So you're trying to, it's become a business where you're trying to create a product that will maximise your income. It's as far away from grassroots sports as you'll ever get from Glasgow Aki's or Air. It's as far away from that. It's an image, a product that's there to make money. And, um, you know, fair play to them. It, it works. Do you think then it continues, it'll continue to go on like that? Do you think it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger the more kind of corporate and professional it becomes? Or do you think it'll plateau? I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not very good at looking into the future. I don't have a DeLorean or a, a clock uh, in Back to the Future to get me there. But I do think the difficulty, because before this one, they worried about would it take place because of the dominance of English club rugby and the English big clubs might not let their players go. But what I always thought the beauty of the Lions was it was like a big travelling circus with its own brand arriving somewhere. And it wasn't so much about what it meant back in the UK, although the famous story is that the Welsh boys, in fact, I think even in my tour in New Zealand, the Welsh boys would say in the valleys, people are waking up. And you went, ooh, the hairs in the back, you, ooh, people are waking up. They switch it on the radios and tellies to watch us. 
But nowadays, but 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 I think Lions tours were actually when you you've been on one, when you're there and the camp goes to New Zealand, or Australia, you see what happens. So I think as long as the lion, I actually think as long as the lions are valuable, where they're going to go to, they'll survive. And of course, as it's went on, the, the tours have got shorter, and you know, yeah. you've been very much outspoken about the injuries in the game and the rise of concussion and issues with that. Do you think that could be a threat? almost possibly fatal to the Lions? No. When I was a kid, there was a film called Rollerball. And Rollerball was about how a special game of hockey evolved into a game of hockey where you killed each other. And actually, there's something horribly fascinating about a physical contact sport. Peter Wright on Radio Scott often says to me, one day we'll see someone die on the pitch. You know, Tom Evans was close. Um, Will Greenwood was pulled back from death by James Robson. I actually don't view my days as being the, the great days of rugby. I think they were great, but I think nowadays people are absorbed in a hugely physical sport. You know, it's, it's unbelievably physical, but that's in some ways it's macabre fascination, isn't it? The fascination with this is these blokes now are huge. I once texted my son. We beat England by a record score. And I texted him, say, it's on, it's on um, Eurosport. Watch it, your dad has quite a good game. We beat the English 33-6. And back comes this text. Dad, quite interesting, but how come nobody tackled? As in the game's totally different. So I think, I, you know, I think rugby's dangerous. It's sore. I'm sore from playing rugby. I don't know where you are, but I'm, you know, I've had bits of me replaced. This is replaced. But I don't, but I... The beauty of the Lions, to, to, to answer the question properly, what's happened in television sport is you watch the best at anything. I don't think we watch Scottish domestic football anymore because it's not good compared to the best. But the Lions, the brand of the Lions, they are the best. That's the best rugby you're going to watch. You know, the Lions, as a, as a bunch, are one of the brands in, in world sport that you know that's the best. Because they, they usually beat somebody, you know, they, they come second sometimes, but they usually, they drew with the All Blacks, they usually beat Australia, you're probably going to beat South Africa. So you, the beauty of the Lions as a brand, compared to my day, is they are the best. And that's why I think they'll survive. Following the chat in New Zealand rugby, we went to Sports New Zealand and what was the conclusion of that? Oh, it was brilliant. Well, we went in, we were welcomed by Peter Miskiman, who was the chief executive there, and we sat down with him and it was great. He talked us through all of sport in New Zealand and it was great to see a lot more other than rugby because obviously it is a very varied sporting country and you think about the All Blacks for it, but it really covers a whole range of sports. And then he spoke to us about how he feels that they, how they've got to that elite status in rugby. And he was talking all about the coaching level and how it's all to do with that and how from a very young age I've been coached through and, and that's the difference and accumulative good coaching throughout the years is really having a great a great impact at performance level. I was intrigued by both Andy and John's comments, but the game has completely transformed since their playing days. So I wanted to try catch up with current Lions players, and this brought me to Scotson Stadium, home of the Glasgow Warriors. Here, I arranged a chat with 2017's top try scorer, Tommy Seymour, and 2013 and 17 Lion, Stuart Hogg. Tommy, a Lion 2017, what was that feeling like when you get the call up at uh, the start of the year? Yeah, obviously, uh, amazing, amazing time. Like, uh, obviously, you know, it gets, uh, it gets done publicly, obviously, in the announcement on, on, 
on TV, so um, that was big. Obviously, I, wasn't actually, I didn't actually watch the announcement. Um, I was at, at lunch with um, a teammate, Richie Vernon, so uh, a couple of the guys, Ali Price and Finn Russell, had to be a couple of tables over, so um, they're the ones that actually broke the news to me. But, um, yeah, amazing, a bit, a bit of disbelief at the start. Um, but then just, yeah, amazing. Like, it was just a bit of a whirlwind. Obviously, rushed off to Murrayfield to do a bit of, of press. But, yeah, obviously, it's um, a real special moment in my career, so uh, one I'll never forget. Yeah. And then, of course, to go on the tour and finish top try scorer and to average the most yards of any back, you know, that just kind of shows that how much good form you're in. How did that kind of feel to get that achievement? Yeah, I mean, it's not something I actually... You know, I wasn't really aware of it too much when it's happened. Obviously, when you're out there, you know, you, you know you've got a couple of dots. Obviously, it's good. Um, not too much is made of it, to be honest. I didn't think much of it. Obviously, the, the, the meters thing, is, I think, it's just something that's come out of recent, uh, recent information. Obviously, it's a pleasant stat to hear. Like, it's something, something that... You know, I'll try and I try and achieve. So, um, no, really happy. Look, it's um, it's nice to have. You know, dotted down somewhere. Like, obviously, um, you know, I'll not put too much to it. But you know, it's something nice to to crack out and um, and tell the wee man when he's grown up. You know. Yeah, definitely. You know, a lot has changed over the last kind of 15 years. Kind of rise of the club game and and uh, a lot more in kind of test internationals for your country. Do you think the uh, the, the line still holds the same kind of stature amongst the players? I absolutely believe so. I think you know a lot of um, a lot of you know, there is some comments made by certain people, but I think all you have to do is when you enter, you know, close to what is going to be a Lions year. I think the buzz that it creates publicly, both through media channels, both through it just be conversations with with your mates down the pub. I think it still holds a real special place for a lot of fans, and certainly from a player's perspective. Um, obviously, I think it still is a, is a massive deal. I think you know, in that environment, it's it's so unique, it's so special. I, I don't think, from my perspective, both someone who's witnessed it um, as a fan and, and someone who's managed to be lucky enough to be involved, I think, in both camps and, and, and across a wide range of people, it's um, it's still incredibly special. And I think even even rugby fans, um, who, you know, who may not follow rugby for, for four years at a time, still, you know, still pay attention and still uh, enjoy going out and watching, and watching the Lions. So, Hoggy, two-time tourist, 2013 your first time, what was that feeling like when you get the call? Yeah, it was pretty special. Um, obviously, as a kid growing up, yeah, you kind of dream of playing at the highest level, and obviously you watch all the Lions DVDs growing up, and um, yeah, it was something pretty special to hear your name getting called out, and you know, I learned to have a lot. Um, you know, I didn't play in any of the test matches, but yeah, I still learned to have a lot, and you know, I believe that it's, uh, it's maybe the player person I am today, so yeah, I love my experience of it, and um, it just makes you hungrier to, to achieve more. In 2017 in New Zealand, you didn't, didn't last as long as, as you'd have wanted. You know, I must have been quite disappointed. What was going through your head at that time? Yeah, obviously, you know, you, you work incredibly hard to, to try and get there. And, you know, for me, I, I was very fortunate to play in good Scotland teams and, and good Glasgow teams that get you there. But uh, in all seriousness, it, it took me a while to get over it. And, um, you know, only, unfortunately, since then, I've only been able to play four games as well through other injuries. So, uh, no, it was disappointing, but um, as I said, yeah, it makes you, it makes you have to get back. People would say about like, yourself that missed injury to go on it. Do you think it's a, a kind of a bit of a Can it outweighs the, the risk? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, you're playing for you know ultimately the biggest competition you can play for in the Lions jersey. You want to try and get one over on the on that position. Um, you know, it goes down in the history of weeks. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely massive in terms of all that kind of area. So. Uh, yeah, I think it will, it will always be like that. Um, I'll, I'll be very, very surprised if anything changes. That's perfect. Hope you This time last year, I was really uninitiated with the Lions. I knew about them, but it wasn't until I went to New Zealand and it got that once in a lifetime opportunity that it opened my eyes on them and the brand. And yes, there will always be the pessimistic views. People that say that the Lions changed, it's now a brand, they sell their image. They're just trying to get a jersey off the shelf, but I don't see it as that. I think the Lions has changed and it's had to change. It's not 1888 anymore, the world's evolved. It's a professional game and they have evolved. That would be the best word for it. They've evolved into this outfit. And that outfit works because of its USP, its scarcity. That is the unique thing about it. There's no other touring party in the world like it. There really isn't. And there will always be those naysayers. But the Lions Tour, it's not about us. 
It's not about the people here and what they think of it. The reason the Lions works is because it's about the people who the Lions go to visit. When they arrive in South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, it's the fans over there that welcome them. New Zealand, early on this year, announced that they had a historic year for turnover last year. Because of that summer tour last year, that's where the difference is made. That is what makes the Lions what it is. It's not about us, it's about the places they go. And as long as that stays, then I don't think the Lions' future is not just guaranteed. I think it is only going to get better and stronger. I think it's growing and I think it has struggled with the turn of the professional where it's had to find that brand and it's established it. But as long as there is a demand from the other side of the world for the Lions to go there and visit, then I think it's only going to get better. That's my thoughts anyway. What about yours? I'm the best. 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 I'm the